I don't know if you know about little dirty face Johnny. Well, he went to school in his first day in school, his teacher offered him some cookies. And he says, I don't want any effing cookies. So the teacher says, ah, oh, what are you talking about? So the next day, he comes in and the teacher offers him cookies and he says, I don't want any effing cookies. And the third day, the same thing, I don't want any effing cookies. So the teacher calls his mother up and she says, watch this. So she turns to a little dirty face Johnny and says, how about a cookie, Johnny? And he says, I don't want any effing cookies. And she says, well, F them. Don't give them any effing cookies. <laughs> Uh, my aunt. It's not on yet. No, it is. I hear it. I recognize Somerville. You can't hear it. My name is my aunt. And what's your favorite part about Somerville? <laughs> the Jumpy House. Ah, the Jumpy House. Did you say you had a song for me to sing? For you to sing? What's the song? Fuka Akama. A big song. Sing it? Fuka Akama. Hi, I'm Alderman Bob McWaters, the Ward 3 Alderman. Good afternoon on this beautiful day on Main Streets on Highland Ave. I just wanted to say hi to all the constituents and residents of Somerville. My fondest memories usually relate back to Christmas Eve. Somerville always had a sense of community as we have today with everyone out on the streets enjoying different festivities. There was one house we used to go to every Christmas Eve, Mrs. Brisboy, an Italian woman. She would cook for the entire neighborhood, would come over and have the seven fish. Even when we, as we got older, started our own families, many of my friends who were policemen, firemen, and had different occupations, no matter where they were, they always came back to that house at some point uh, to, to share in a drink or some nice Italian food. So Somerville's always been a sense of community. This is what we continue today with Main Streets and many of the uh, festive art and music festivals, honk, everything we have in the city brings us all together and this is important, thank you. So this is the story of the first time I was ever on television, which is apropos for Somerville Media Access Television. Um, I was asked uh, when I was in the sixth grade to be on the Merv Griffin quiz show called Play Your Hunch. Now Merv Griffin, he started uh, you know, Jeopardy and all those shows. He became, a, I think, a billionaire. But he used to be a lounge singer, and his first time on TV was this show Play Your Hunch. And they had three contestants, A, B, and C. They were the three people. It, like, it was like to tell the truth kind of thing. And then there were two couples that had to guess which was the real A, B, or C. So they'd have, say, one person was a real magician and the other two were fakes. Um, so they asked me to go on and be Romeo. And uh, I was going to respond with a line. Can you hear that rock and roll in the background? <laughs> really? Wow. Um, I had to say a response to Juliet, who was an actress in the balcony. So she would say her line, and each three of the three kids, of which I was one, would mouth back a response. So they asked me to actually do the Romeo and Juliet line. And Juliet would say something, and we run. And this is all live TV. This is like 1960. So I said to my father, what's the balcony scene? I'm checking my time. Oh, I'm good. Um, and he said, well, this is the balcony scene. But soft with light through yonder window breaks, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise for sun and kill for the end of your moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. That thou her maid are far more fair than she be not the maid, for she is envious, thou best delivers it, but sick and green, and number fools to wear it, cast it off. It is my lady, it is my love, oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet says nothing, what of that? Her eye, and, and it goes on like that. So I memorized that whole thing, I was in the sixth grade. I get to the TV station, and they say, okay, you're the Romeo guy, right? I go, yeah. 
Okay, we've got two other kids, but one's going to be doing the Gettysburg Address. One will be doing Alice in Wonderland. So I said, all right, that's fine. What's your, what, what's your, what are your lines? I said, well, but soft would like to be under when it breaks it in. And I started into it. They said, no, 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 no. You only have four lines. You have to respond to Juliet. And those four lines are, alack, alack there lies more peril in thine eyne than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I, I didn't even know what half of that meant. So I said, well, how am I going to know that? And they said, well, we'll put you in the coat room. We're on live air, national TV with the quiz show in an hour. So I sat in the coat room thinking about being on live TV, not thinking much about the lines, unable to memorize these things. And we go on TV, and uh, Julia says her line, and they, the, one of the couples guesses, uh, we think it's Kid A. And Merv Griffin says, oh, what lines were you mouthing? And the kid says, Four score and 20 years ago, our fathers brought fourth. And this, oh, we go, okay, so that's not the real one. Couple number two, who do you guess? I was B. So they guessed me. And they said, all right. And Bernard Griffin came and said, what lines were you saying? And I went, a lack the lies in, in the eyes, the peril and, and, and swords. And, and I just had no idea what I was doing. So well, Merv Griffin knew I didn't know the lines. He goes, well, that's probably the right guy. So. So then, what they do, which is the fun of the thing, is they ask each of the kids, you know, so what do you want to be when you grow up and all of that. So they get to me and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, an actor. <laughs> and Merv Griffin goes, oh, really? And the kid next to me goes, yeah, in monster movies. <laughs> Who are you? What do you, what do you mean in my? And I said, actually, yes, I do. I want to be in, like, Boris Karloff movies and, and all of those crazy, you know, B movies that were being made in the 50s. And I said, as a matter of fact, I memorized a speech for today, and you didn't use it because I was told that was the balcony seat. And Merv Griffin says, you did? What's that? And I went, but suffered light through yonder window breaks. It is the Easter Julius, the sun arises. And I did the whole speech. And to shut me up, they turned on what they used to have were applause lights. And the applause lights start flashing. The audience applause. It's over. I got 25 bucks for it. That was a fortune for a sixth grader. And that's my story the first time on television. Sister Margaret Ann Meyer, the Medical Missionaries of Mary from 179 Highland Avenue, Somerville. And I came from New York in April. Uh, after 61 and a half years, left Boston and went to Ireland to study medicine. And then I went to Africa for 36 years. And I worked in Uganda, Tanzania, and Nigeria, and I just love being with people. I love seeing all the children in this avenue. It's just a very happy, joyful place. So this is my companion now. Oh, and I'm Nina, I'm one of the sisters living up here at Highland Avenue, the Medical Missionaries of Mary. And we've been blessed to be able to be part of this community here. And myself, I've spent oh, 39 years in Africa, mainly as a pilot with the Flying Doctor Service and then with uh, primary health care and education in Su Sudan and uh, northern Kenya in the northern district frontier of the Turkana Desert. And uh, more or less there's countries in East Africa, huh? And um, we have a ministry of mainly health care to mothers and children and many of our sisters are midwives nurses and midwives and um, we keep out of mischief by uh, helping other people right yes yes so that's our little story and um, it's actually a long long story but we're making it short okay come and visit us come and visit us, visit us. 179 Highland Avenue Somerville. Somerville. <laughs> I have a question. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? To, to get to the other side, of course. So why did the rooster cross the road? Why? Because that's where all the chickens were. <laughs> all right, well, we are Flight of Fire, which is less weird to do when we have all four of us on with a mic. But uh, my name's Maverick. I'm the lead vocalist and rhythm guitarist. I'm Tia Mayhem. Tanya's identical twin sister, and I play bass and sing backup vocals. I'm Maddie May Scott, and I'm the drummer. Woo! And, uh, I'll teach you about your experience with Somerville, how often you go to Somerville here a lot, and what do you love so much about it? We love Somerville a lot. Um, I actually live right down the road here, technically on the Medford side, but, you know, I, I call myself a Somervillain. 
I've lived in Somerville too, in, in Winter Hill area on the other side, and we've loved this scene for a long time. We've been playing, you know, in uh, the greater Boston area for the last eight years, eight years, um, and a lot of a lot of gigs in Somerville. Uh, we were we were part of the Rumble at once. Oh yeah, good old PAs. Yep. Five years. All right, you got it. Here we go. Um, well, our, our next uh, show that is uh, really accessible and community oriented, just like uh, Summer Streets is, is the Alston Village Street Fair on September 24th. And um, that's just like this big open, you know, uh, Harvard Street's going to be closed down and street performers and bands. And we are, um, I think we're, we're headlining that one. So we'll be on at five, which is great at the main stage. And um, we also, we have a lot of gigs coming up and you can always go to flightoffire.com and see our full tour listing. I think we have eight shows this month. So come and stalk us everywhere. All right. All right. 175th? Yeah. All right. All right, so. We'll uh, say this is, we'll say Flight of Fire. And we want to wish Somerville a happy, happy 175th. 175th anniversary. Happy 175th anniversary. All right, so we are. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to say we are. We all say Flight <laughs> of Fire, and we want to wish Somerville a Happy 175th. Happy 175th birthday. Okay, ready? All right. <laughs> We're very well rehearsed. All right, ready? And we are Flight, Flight of Fire, Fire, and we want to wish Somerville a happy 175th birthday. <laughs> should, we, should we try that again? Wait, we're saying 175th, 100, not 100, 175th. <laughs> Maddie was just like staring at me. All right, all right, ready? All right. We are Flight of Fire, and we want to wish Somerville a happy 175th birthday. <laughs> <laughs>